CVI stands for cortical visual impairment, also called cerebral visual impairment, which is a form of blindness based in the brain. It's caused by damage to the brain's visual processing centers and is the world's number one cause of visual impairment in children. Blindness which is based in the brain has some specific characteristics. Beyond eye conditions like nystagmus or being short-sighted, the visual impairment in CVI ebbs and flows. Children may be able to see sometimes, while other times they are blind. This unreliable vision can change based on the day and circumstances. Also, since different brain pathways are affected in each person, there is no one-size-fits-all for CVI behaviors. Every child with DSCVI is different. Some studies suggest that CVI is more common in kids with Down syndrome. In one study, 38% of kids with Down syndrome showed signs of CVI. In the study, over 200 families of children with Down syndrome completed a questionnaire about CVI behaviors. The first questions dealt with the visual field and peripheral vision. Most people have a visual field of 180 degrees, which is a half circle. For people with CVI though, the visual field is often restricted. It might simulate looking through a tube. The visual field could be less on one side, so a child might miss the food on one side of their plate. They also might bump into door frames or not see things above their head. The other questions dealt with visual recognition, which is perceiving an item and knowing what it is. People with CVI often struggle with visual recognition because they either cannot see the object well or because they do not know what it is. They might not recognize familiar objects, like the family car. They also might not recognize faces of friends or family members in pictures or in real life. Some other common traits of children with suspected DSCVI included having difficulty with stairs, struggling to walk on uneven ground, having challenging behavior in crowded places such as stores, and putting their face very close to the TV. Let's explore what CVI looks like in Down syndrome in terms of overall development. A lot of developmental milestones, like pointing, walking, or recognizing faces, depend on being able to see well. So, because of their visual impairment, children with DSCVI may be later to reach these milestones than children with Down syndrome alone. It's very common for doctors, therapists, and families to assume that slower development in a child with Down syndrome is due to being severely affected by Down syndrome. But by making this assumption, we might not look into other causes, including CVI. If we miss the signs of visual impairment, we miss the opportunity to intervene and support vision and development starting at an early age. It's important to notice if a child is developing slower than their peers with Down syndrome. If they are, you should ask yourself whether this could be related to their vision and the child should be evaluated for CVI. Let's look at some of the CVI behaviors which are a result of a child's lack of vision. Since their vision doesn't work well, children with CVI might use their other senses, like touch or hearing, to navigate. They also might be only able to focus on one sense at a time, using either their vision or their hearing, for example. This is Hannah. Notice how she pauses while walking up the stairs because she's having trouble looking, listening, and moving at the same time, which is called sensory integration. She also moves very slowly, showing difficulty with visual guidance of her lower limbs. When she crosses the threshold, she has a startled response to a new texture of the rug because she has difficulty with depth perception. Issues with sensory integration, visual guidance of lower limbs, and issues with depth perception are all common in CVI. Here is baby Emma in the restaurant. Notice how she is happy and socially motivated to interact with her mom. But she's not able to point at her dad because she cannot see him across the table. She's also distracted by the lights and is not turning to noise or locating where the noise is coming from. These behaviors, lack of direct pointing, visual latency, and difficulty with distance viewing, and distraction by lights are all common in CVI. In this video, notice how Emma misses placing her hand on her other hand. She also misses the high five and is distracted by lights streaming from, in, from outside. They are also signs of CVI. Children with CVI might be more attracted to objects of specific colors, often red or yellow. 
Though they prefer colors, this doesn't mean they fully comprehend what they are seeing. Children with CVI often have unreliable vision. Compensatory behaviors are related to coping with this unreliable vision and getting the help they need to navigate life. As examples, children with CVI might lean on other people or solid objects or drop to the floor in order to ground themselves. They may clear the top of a crowded desk or crumple up a crowded worksheet. It's common for families, teachers, and therapists to misunderstand these behaviors and attribute them to defiance or stubbornness. But when a child with Down syndrome communicates with abnormal or disruptive behaviors, it may be because of their vision. Unlike kids who use their vision to watch others work and play, kids with CVI may avoid looking, miss details, and have trouble distinguishing faces. Therefore, they have trouble learning by watching, which is called incidental learning. This can influence play skills, activities of daily living, and concept and vocabulary development. They might have to be directly taught skills, such as conversations, facial expressions, and motor behavior. In a classroom, crowding, movement, and noise make it difficult for children with DSCVI to pay attention. Because of their challenges with visual recognition, children with DSCVI may have trouble identifying objects and pictures. They also might struggle with recognizing letters in a different font. This can affect their learning from books or flashcards and impact vocabulary development. Worksheets are sometimes difficult for children with CVI because they are visually crowded. Tracing may also be difficult because of trouble with visual guidance of the hands and visual attention to following the lines. With all of these visual challenges, children with DSEVI may become frustrated or overwhelmed in a classroom and can lead to behaviors like crumpling papers, getting up from the desk, putting their head down, or hiding. There are many strategies to help a child with DSEVI learn. They should learn in a quiet, calm environment. They may benefit from hands-on learning with real objects and using more realistic photographs with color. Learning materials should be free of visual clutter. Repetition helps kids with DSCVI learn, as well as taking frequent breaks. Kids with DSCVI also may benefit from using high contrast backgrounds to help them distinguish shapes and letters while reading. Typically, children with DS are visual learners. They are excellent observers of people and their surroundings and are typically very good at imitation, gestures, and facial expressions. Kids with DS and CVI can still be visual learners, but since they have unreliable vision, they need extra support for their vision and extra focus on learning through their other senses, including hearing and touch. Some also may learn keyboarding skills and braille so that they can continue to learn even with unreliable vision. Children with CVI might also do better with screen-based learning. The computer screen helps reduce visual clutter and background noise and allows the child to focus on one thing at a time. If a child has Down syndrome and seems to struggle with their vision, they should be assessed for CVI to make sure that they can learn and grow in a way that works for them. Diagnosis for CVI is based on a combination of an eye exam done by an ophthalmologist and a functional visual exam done by a teacher of the visually impaired, or TVI. The functional visual assessment may include a questionnaire of behaviors, as well as numerous evaluations in a clinic examining visual behavior following into the 16 categories which are listed here. If the functional visual exam shows deficits not explained by the ophthalmological exam of the eye, the ophthalmologist will diagnose CVI. If you suspect your child has CVI, there are many CVI screening questionnaires which can be accessed for free online. A few examples are shown below. To learn more about CVI, visit Perkins' website or Google CVI Now.